Intense feeling, raw emotions, and a cheering crowd are what make any sport amazing. But what makes it even better are the godlike moments that become a huge part of history. That's exactly what we're going to be talking about in today's video, so sit back and try your best to relax as we take you to the top 6 god mode moments in tennis history. First up, Nadal's unbelievable returns against Karlovic in Shanghai in 2015. We'd define this match as an undefeatable, resilient, and a display as an indestructible fighting spirit. Yeah, that's right. Nadal had us hanging on the edge of our seats the entire game as our eyes move left to right. If you're a tennis fan, you'll probably remember this match, but if you don't, let's just say Nadal was lethal that day against Karlovic. You know how sometimes in the beginning of matches they can be like super slow and super long? Well, this match was the entire opposite. The king of clay Nadal immediately broke into the first game of the match with three incredible returns on Karlovic's first serve. Previously struggling with his tennis in the tournament, Nadal was very quick to make a switch and serve as a conqueror on the field, quite literally. Nadal's god like energy made his movements fascinating. It really felt like Nadal was like the flash moving from one corner to the other. He was present everywhere on the court, making sure he was hitting balls to every corner, giving Karlovic a real tough time. After a long match of 2 hours and 44 minutes, Nadal won the match and made a godlike return to the tournament. Reflecting on the crucial service break in the first set, Nadal said that that game was so important, probably one of the best games in my career, almost a miracle. Three winners from his first serve, that was really amazing. This goes down as the rare game in the history of tennis. Next up, we got Andy Roddick upsetting Roger Federer in Miami. This is in 2012. If Sweet Redemption had a face, this game was more like it. Roger had the upper hand as he flawlessly moved around the court without breaking a single sweat for the first 21 games, including the 2009 Wimbledon final, which for tennis fans is an emotional topic. While on the other hand, Roddick's luck was quite the opposite. He'd been on a losing streak for quite a few months, and this match then brought the exact moment where the turns had tabled. <laughs> Just joking, you know, the tables have turned. Balls were thrown into each other's court. The prime time in tennis history where the two came face to face was finally here. Roddick appeared to be in classic form, attacking confidently with his forehand on returns, rocketing serves with speed and accuracy. This is it. He had finally switched on his god mode. In the first set, both players just traded their services. With no great surprise, the first set resulted in a tiebreak. The crowd must have been preparing themselves for the second set, but this, I bet you nobody could have actually prepared themselves for. The second set proved to be a total turn of events. Roger came to life and started returning Roddick's serves with ease, resulting in an easy win for Roger. It was the last set when Roddick finally gave what was considered to be one of the best sets he's ever played, according to his fans at least. He went into overdrive and he started playing high-risk tennis. He started playing aggressively, making the audience's heads turn swiftly and finally winning. He won the last set and went on to seal the match, hitting three consecutive booming first serves, bringing an end to Federer's 16-match winning streak in the third round of the Miami Masters. Sad day for Federer fans, we'd have to assume. And then we have when Murray defeats sluggish Federer in Shanghai 2012. Well, well, well. This is considered to be one of the greatest games in tennis history. Two giants battled for an hour and 38 minutes. The crowd had anticipated this one to be a, uh, a good one. With what seemed like a semifinal, the match was very quick to take a turn and become one-sided. Now why, you might be asking? Well, of course, it was Murray's classic, fantastic, god Oddly form. With groundbreaking, smashing, forceful hits, Murray seemed to be unmatchable. There was no room for redemption, or we mean even playing for Fed. The crowd was in awe of Murray's fast footwork, his promising backhand, and tremendous, tremendous focus. Murray's form had left Fed to be picked on by his fans, who were now seriously questioning his gameplay. In the history of tennis, this match went down as the single biggest loss that Federer had faced in his career. If any of you are planning to take tennis seriously, you really should watch this match like a hawk. With tremendous focus on Murray's all-star game. Next, Dominic Thiem upsets Novak Djokovic at the 2019 ATP Finals. From the moment this match started, it had the audience biting their nails and sitting exactly on the edge of their seats. It seemed like Thiem had the ball in his court from the very get-go. I was in the zone from the first point on. Well, of course you were. You were all over the court, and we mean that in the best way possible. The first set alone was so amazing that it sets the pace for the entire match. Thiem's winning hits and built a lot of pressure on poor Djokovic. And fortunately, though, he didn't cave in easily. Djokovic was in one of his best forms, and he tried to ensure that his hits were met with the same standard. However, things didn't pan out the way that he had planned. Oh well, that's that's just life. Even Djokovic couldn't help but point out that his opponent did an amazing job. What he did tonight was just out of the ordinary. In quotes. Thiem was full of energy, and he showed no mercy to his opponent playing every swing with force at every chance that he had. Finally scoring a win in one of the most amazing matches in history of tennis. Becoming one of the first Austrians to qualify 
qualify for the semifinals of the NITO ATP Finals. Up next, Djokovic beats Nadal to the Qatar title of 2016. A lot of people get their hair blowouts in the comfort of their homes, but this blowout happened inside, in a stadium. Djokovic and Nadal rivalry, it, it, it's not unheard of. Rather, it's unevenly spread. Enjoyable from the outside, but it's just messy as it gets on the inside. From the get-go, the two seem to be in a defensive mode, ready to tear each other apart on the court kind. The intensity vibrated towards the audience, who was in awe of the player's movements. Some mistakes were made on Djokovic's part, giving Nadal the upper hand. But that's alright, and that's okay, because Djokovic was quick to own up to his mistakes, and he was adamant about not repeating them. He had cornered Nadal into giving him the points he needed to win Qatar. It was shaky at first, since Djokovic's position gave Nadal the upper hand, who was, by the way, using the same sheer force and was quick on his feet to respond to his own winning hits, but Djokovic was not one to back down. The first game gave Djokovic the motivation he needed to switch on his, yeah, you guessed it right, his god mode. Unlike most players, Djokovic maintained a calm and composed demeanor, allowing him to build enough pressure to finally get the balls in the court. In the first four strokes, his ground strokes are said to be at least 8 kilometers per hour faster than in his previous matches. Now, if that's not like switching on god-tier behavior, we don't know what is. This was enough to push Nadal so far back that he still hasn't found a way to beat Djokovic. The rivalry continues as Djokovic fights to keep his dominance alive in the world of tennis. Then, Rafael Nadal beats Cressy Melbourne's summer set of 2022. From time to time, Nadal has proved one thing to his fans. Consistency. That is, we believe, the key to his game. The summer of 2022 in Melbourne proved to be a showcase of Nadal's supremacy, winning the audience's hearts and leaving them to witness one of the greatest matches to go down in the history of tennis. Nadal proved that he was the main character of every film, and, and we were all just extras living in his world. The Spaniard was playing for the first time since August since his foot injury back in the 2021 season, and for sure he was hungry for a win, and he went for it without doubting himself for a single second. His consistency pulled through as he defeated Cressy without dropping a set with the final winning score of 7-6 and 6-3. These numbers prove not just Nadal's game, but they're just a show of dominance. The game was really rough for Cressy. Nadal's aggression had been activated, and he was not for a second giving Cressy a chance to score. Fine befitting replies given to Cressy's services made him lead this final. Nadal ended up winning his 89th tour level title at Melbourne Somerset Trophy, which gave him a kickstart for this year. I mean, at least somebody's having a good year, right? And that's a wrap for this video. What was your favorite God Mode moment? Let us know in the comment section below. Make sure to give this video a thumbs up, then subscribe to our channel for more videos like this one. And we'll see you in the next one.